World Championship have got uh, a new category they've just launched for 2011, uh, which will replace the Junior World Championship. So it's a, a one-make series called the WRC Academy. You know, the idea is to get experience and exposure at a world level and then move up through the ranks. Pirelli support the program and as part of that have a Pirelli Star Driver Scheme. The FIA have launched a, a Women in Motorsports Commission and, and through that commission uh, got a nomination to go to the shootout in Spain for the WRC Academy which you know, was an opportunity that you, know, you do dream of but for it to actually be present and be available to me was yeah surreal. I'm very proud. Yeah, you know, just it, it still blows me away. I just cannot believe that um, you know it's uh, she's uh, as I said to her um, before she came home from England um, um, when she's emailing backwards and forwards to Michelle Mouton and Fabrizio Pons. I said, Molly, you're you're rapidly becoming my hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Um, I actually got a phone call from Fabrizio Pons, which for me, in in any circumstance, to have a phone call from you know, someone iconic like that was unreal. But I remember it was it was at work and it came up and I was sitting at my desk. I was like, you know, do I do I take this call or so I remember just picking up the phone and, and sort of running down the corridor. Incredibly proud. I think I actually even maybe shed a tear there somewhere. But yeah, you know, for me, I I have done you know very little throughout 2010. You know, initially I said when that opportunity came up, I actually said to Coral. Why don't you get it a flyby here and we'll do a test? And I slept on it for a night and I woke up the next morning and I rang him and I said, why don't you just come to Spain? And he said, that's a really good idea. He said, I've got a passport. And so Neil came to Spain as well, which, which was fabulous. So he, he did a tarmac and a gravel test with Molly in Spain prior to the shootout. Yeah, you've got to remember that uh, she only started in this game. She didn't do go-karts, she didn't race motorbikes when she was younger. So, you know, she's done it on her own merit. And, you know, I was incredibly happy at the end of it that I was able to help and, and be a part of it and, you know, probably feel needed. And, yeah, it was actually a, a really good experience. To know that you're in a room of 16 people and only six of you are getting through and, all, you know, all of them are all young hopefuls like myself who put everything on the line to try and be a rally driver. So it was like dangling this massive carrot in front of you saying, you know, there's six rounds of the World Rally Championship up for grabs and who wants it the most? I remember just standing there, my leg was shaking. <laughs> and I was, I was the last person to be called out as well. So they announced five of the spots and there was one spot left. and. I was just, you're looking around the room and there's everyone just looking at this chair and yeah, it was, it was never happy. You know, a lot of people think, oh Molly, you're so lucky, you've just won six rounds of the World Championship. How great is that? And oh yes, you've done all this hard work to get to this point. But as Molly said to me, yes, there might have been hard work to get to this point, but it's now that the hard work begins. It does open a lot of doors and it's a fantastic opportunity, but you know, I have to make the most of it and I can't afford to be turning up at a rally not prepared. So in many senses, it's going to be by far the most difficult year. You know, I, I need to make sure that I'm in cars more often than I have been and, and do it, getting the testing miles and getting the, getting the kilometres. So uh, my plan is to buy myself a car and you know, working on the sponsorship now and the budget to to try and do other rounds in Europe and the BRC. Now, if I was Molly's friend, not Molly's mother, I would be happily out there banging on doors and trying to find a sponsorship deal. But it's really hard if you're Molly's mum. You can't go knocking on the doors. Knock, knock, hello, I'm Molly's mum and my daughter's doing this and would you like to sponsor her? That, it's just difficult. So it's actually a hindrance. I don't think it has sunk in yet. Um, I think, you know, maybe when we're at the start line of the first stage it will, but it's, yeah, especially coming, you know, back home for Christmas to see the family, it does put things in perspective. Well, if you'd asked me uh, a couple of years ago, I, I, I would have said no. I, I would have said that she uh, is too young, you know, just hasn't got the experience, but my God, if she 
developed that experience so rapidly uh, that um, I think anything's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think in 2010 in the Citroen series, you had that, that top group of the really fast guys. Um, stepping up now into the WRC Academy for 2011, it's 24 of those top couple of guys. So, you know, the competition is going to be incredibly intense. It's really easy to get wrapped up in this and focus on you have to win every rally, you have to do this. You know, all she's got to do is go and do the best job she possibly can. Try not to put too much pressure on herself and just keep exceeding expectations, you know. All through Molly's career, you know, everyone's thought little girl going rallying, then all of a sudden she's in front of that person, then, you know, she just keeps exceeding everyone's expectations. She's just got to keep doing that. And, you know, there's no reason why she couldn't end up in the World Rally Championship in two or three years' time. And obviously that's her plan. You know, I think the World Rally Championship is screaming out for a Molly Taylor and she's just got to keep improving at the, the pace she has been and, you know, she'll end up there. My advice will start running out then because she'll be above me. <laughs> it's amazing. You look at something like the top level of the WRC and it seems so far-fetched and so far away, but, you know, three years ago what I'm doing now seemed so far-fetched and far away. So, you know, as long as I keep keep making these big steps and keep learning and, and improving at the same rate, um, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs>